Hey, what's going on, you guys? This is Madam, and I'm coming back to you once again. This time, we are still at the Mississippi Today, and this is the back channel. And um, this is the continuation of the article that I was doing about Brett Falk and the former governor, uh, Davis, knew her son, and a couple of other people uh, that took you know, family, well, family funds that was meant for needy families and took them and just built the whole volleyball stadium with it and said, fuck them poor people. Well, we don't care. But, okay. It says, fall first asked for funding from the Mississippi Department of Human Services during his July 24, 2017 meeting at USM with new Davis University athletic staff and others according to the motion but this time the University of Southern Mississippi and the Southern Missis Mississippi Athletic Foundation which would pay for the construction had already made some progress on Favre's idea on July 1st according to the records the university leased a, its athletic facilities and fields to the foundation for a dollar you heard me, a dollar, which made it possible for the foundation to lease the facilities to the new non-profit, news non-profit for five million dollars. Because of the strict prohibition, uh, prohibit, prohibit, I'm just having an issue with some words, just please, don't mind me. Uh, <laughs> on a uh, prohibition uh, on using TANF funds to pay for construction, the parties had to craft a new agreement that would look to satisfy federal law and give the illusion that they were helping needy families with the help of legal advice from the MDHS attorneys. They came up with an idea for the new profit, news profit, non-profit to enter a five million dollar upfront lease of the university's athletic facility, which non-profits would purportedly uh, use for programming. In exchange, the foundation would include offices for the non-profit inside the volleyball facility which they called the Wellness Center. Davis immediately committed $4 million to the project according to the motion. While Fob was pleased with MDHS's $4 million commitment, he knew a state-of-the-art volleyball facility was likely to cost more. The filing uh, reads, to make matters worse, U.S. M apparently had a policy that any construction project on campus had to be funded fully and the money deposited into the USM uh, account before construction could begin. Fogg thought of a way to get some extra cash to the program, even more money could flow through his company in exchange for the athletic cutting ads for the state's welfare program. Lou said she thought it was a good idea. Was just that here the way to do it for text? These are text messages that's going back and forth. Uh, I should have explained it. I apologize. These are text messages going back and forth between it's a person called New. And then it's her son, and then it's the former governor, and then it's a couple of other people. So just bear with me with all of this, okay, y'all? Um, it says, only days after Fob received the financial commitment from Davis, he had grown impatient with USM, which was moving slowly. Fob contacted Governor Bryant to uh, speed up, speed things along. In response, Governor Bryant called Nancy New. The motion reads and said, wow, 
the new text uh, for just got off the phone with Phil Bryant. He is on board with us. We will get this done. The governor remained in tune, uh, in, uh, in tune on the project as it progressed on November the 2nd, 2017. New text fob. I saw the governor last night. It's all going to work out. Four days later, news nonprofit paid the first lump sum of 2.5 million. It paid another 2.5 million on December the 5th, 2017, according to the state's auditor office report released in 2020. Farb also received his first payment under the advertising agreement of $500,000 in December of 2017. Nancy Santa came today and dropped some money off for text uh, new, new, the person name is new, um, that day. Thank you. Thank you, my goodness, thank you. We need to set up the promo for you soon. You're way too kind. The nonprofit paid the athlete another $600,000 in June of 2018. By 2019, the cost of the construction for the volleyball center had grew and Farb had committed to pay more than a million dollars himself that he expected to receive from the MDHS. The athletic uh, became a stray. Uh, according to the calendar entry entered by Davis, Bryant and Farr requested to meet with welfare officials about the USM facility in January of 2019. And this is the, uh, wait a minute, let me see, let me see if I can flip this so y'all can see this, because this is, uh, this is weird, uh, what they got going on, I mean, any other regular person, um, they would they would definitely be in they would definitely be in jail. Um they would definitely 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 be in jail. Um I'ma try to make it a little bit bigger so y'all can read it. I'm gonna scroll. The meeting was uh requested by Brett Falk and the governor to discuss the educational research program that addresses brain injury caused by concussions. They also want to discuss the new facility at USM. Okay? That's basically what the email says. It says an email calendar invite obtained by Mississippi Today shows Mississippi Department of Human Services Director John Davis inviting his colleagues, former wrestler Ted DiBiase. Not Ted DiBiase, Jesus. To meet at Nancy News office to discuss topics of interest to Brett Farb and the governor. Farb uh, nudged the welfare office uh, officials who promised to help, but the state agency and nonprofits were in a financial turmoil. Months went by with no USM payments. In July of 2019, Brian ousted Davis after the MDHS employee came forward with a tip about the suspected fraud. Brian replaced Davis with former FBI specialist in charge, Christopher Freeze. When Farb asked Brian if Davis' departure would affect the project, according to the motion, the governor responded, I will handle that. Long story, but had to make a change. But I will call Nancy and see what it will take. Just left Farb. These are text messages going back and forth. Just to keep y'all, you know, know where we at. 
uh, Brian then text New, can you help him with his project? We should meet soon uh, to see how I can make sure we keep the project on course. Later that day, te- a new text for to tell him that she would be meeting with the governor in two days. He wants me to continue to help you and get us our project get our project done. She said, with the new uh, guard in place at the top of the welfare agency. Farb and New tried to put together a proposal for more volleyball funding that would pass the smell test. Part of their plan was to put Brian's name on the building, according to the text from the new Farb, new to Farb. Farb relayed a new that Brian said would have to submit proper paperwork to the MD. HS. Like, all of them need to really be in jail. Let me just say that. I just I just couldn't wait until the end of the video to say that all of them need to be in jail. Every last one of them. Ted DiBiase, Brett Falk, the former governor, Brian, uh, New, her son, all of them need to go. None of them niggas should get pleas. Should have got a plea. They just should just go to jail. For real. While the governor texts Farb and needed, uh, it's, this is really long. This is written. Ri- when I say this is long, this is long. Like, they have a whole. You hear me? This is very long. Um, but I'm just going to say, look, listen. Because this is long, and I'm like, I'm going to have to do like a three parter, and I'm really not trying to do that, to be honest with you. But I will link all the descriptions and everything. There is text messages out there. There's no hiding this. I don't understand why the former governor and Brett Favre ass is in, not in jail. I don't. And I, I'm just honestly saying that. And that doesn't reflect any platform that I'm on. This is just an, an opinion that I have. Um, I don't know the particulars of what's going on, so I will say allegedly. However, from what I am gathering from the um, reports that's coming in in regards to this story, all of them need to be in jail. Okay? All of them need to go to jail. They do. And they need to pay back that money. And they need to, the state need to take um, a hold of that goddamn facility and turn it over and give it to what it was attended for, which were needy families and their children. Turn it into a recreation center, not a volleyball center. Not everybody is going to do, like, they, they tried it. They really, really tried it. Not everybody is going to do volleyball. And then on top of that, it was for your daughter. Brother, send his ass to jail. All of them need to go. That's what I think. But I'd like to know what you had to think because this is running a little bit too long. And just drop down in the comment section. Let's get the conversation popping. I don't feel it by any means that a world Hall of Famer, NFL Hall of Famer, should be taking anything out of anybody's mouth. But they the same people that sit around and talk about people that's less fortunate and needy families and make fun of and make fun of them and, and turn around and you steal from them. How does that work, Steven? I get with y'all in the next video.